Hi guys, it's Jacqueline, JW Van Minimal, in my vehicle. <laughs> I am at, well, today is a bittersweet day and I'll tell you about it. But first I have to rant about the weather again. So a couple of days ago in my town, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it was 88 or so degrees. The previous day, it was a lovely 75 degrees. And previous to that, it was a okay 68 degrees. I may have even posted about it. It was sunny for maybe two or three days. Yesterday was Memorial Day. And uh, it was rainy and cloudy. And one of my friends contacted me, who was either in Illinois or Indiana or something, telling me that he was in the basement uh, in a tornado and he was in some basement hiding away for protection. So I just have to rant about that. So, cause I'm sick of this climate change stuff. I am seriously sick of it. And I have to get back to NPR because they're actually talking about something related to climate change and people being able to like survive and do their day to day. And how can they worry about climate change? Because they're worrying about putting food on the table. And I totally, totally agree with that. But I also know that there's some things we could do even in that situation. So uh, my rant really is really mainly about the weather. And uh, right now it's mid 50s. June is four or five days away. And um, it's kind of cold and it's very cloudy and rainy. And I am not accepting the fact that it's just normal or whatever. And my friends on Facebook get tired of me talking about it. Somebody even joked the other day, like, um, the weather's changing. You better get your coat and gloves. Well, I am serious. I, I did think about getting a heavier jacket today, but I'm refusing at the moment. I will wear my hoodie and, uh, layer up and, um, you know, I still got to get my walk in today. I have to walk every day for 30 minutes. So anyway, so that's all, all under the bridge. We will see what tomorrow brings as far as the weather go. So um, today I really just want to check in because it's a bittersweet day in my life right now. Uh, some of you may know Jacqueline J.W. Van Minow, if I didn't say it earlier, I am trying, not trying. I am moving towards um, uh, having, spending, or committing to one year of van living um, to bring um, awareness to uh, sustainability, climate change, um, um, waste reduction, water conservation, you know, all of those things. I am going to um, be living in a van for about a year. And if it's something that works out for me, who knows, it might become a regular lifestyle, but I have to try it. I am a person who doesn't like too much disruption with my own personal life because I am such a, um, what do you call it? I'm an introvert, but I'm an empath and I just like things to be a certain way. So this will be a challenge for me. I have not bought a van yet, a vehicle. Um, I do have a car that I'm going to sell. And I've been going back and forth about this vehicle because my daughter needs a car. And if I put in all of the financial investment in it, maybe I could give it to her. Uh, then I'd have to drive it to Georgia. So it's all kinds of things I'm thinking about. But you guys, I only have about four months left to do this. Well, I have to have a decision made by August because my lease for my apartment ends in... August and I have to make a decision. I can't keep playing around and I don't feel like having another lease. Um, I had a month to month and I think I ended up signing a regular year lease uh, last year just because I knew I wasn't going anywhere because I was on this path. Um, so I'm saying all that to say that Part of me doing van life is being able to sustain an income while I'm gone. And currently, most people who are uh, traveling around, they have some kind of mobile uh, way that they earn a uh, living. And um, 
and me as well, except I'm not a traditional wage earner. Like I traditionally don't work tra regular jobs like a nine to five, even though I've had them. My last one uh, was in 2016. And then I went off to kind of level up my own company, which has been very difficult, by the way, very difficult. I have a consulting company. I'm also a real estate agent, but both those things in my region has been very hard. So I have to supplement my income with like traditional jobs. And I had prayed um, to get a flexible part-time job where it was commission-based with a base pay. And you know, God delivered that to me. And I, I got a, a position in September with this place, I was only planning to be there a few months because there were some other benefits for me taking that job. I really wanted to get my um, skill level up in approaching people because, you know, I keep saying that I am an introvert and I have to really know you to talk to you. So for me to just strike up a conversation with you would be very rare. And I felt like if I took on this position, which I did, I would learn some new techniques and skills around connecting with people and approaching them. And that was in September and today is my last day. And it's bittersweet because I have my own company, my own business that I have to put the time and energy into. And part of it is still trading hours for dollars. When I get a contract, I still have to, you know, work my hours with my company. The difference is... OMG, there is a young man who looks exactly like my grandson, but he's older. He's probably a older teen, maybe 20 years old. And he's like the twin of my grandson. This is crazy. And if I wasn't shooting this video, I would take a photo of him and send it to him. Holy crap. That's crazy. Anyway, I digressed. Um, so when I took this position on, I had a specific reason for doing so. I had a time limit to time I wanted to do it. But in most places, you know, people come and go in these type of jobs. I, um, I had no problem with the job. Uh, I enjoyed the people I worked with and I enjoyed the challenge of that work. Uh, but it's still a sales job, which means you have to, you know, produce to earn, which I understand totally. Um, but uh, you also have, it's, it was just um, not stressful. It was challenging for me because I had to be in one place at the same time uh, every, you know, whatever my schedule was. And it really threw me off balance. And um, it was causing some stress within my schedule. And I turned down like bigger paying jobs because I was committed to the work I was doing. I wasn't going to call in or, you know, do any of those things if I had a a contract that I had to fulfill. Uh, that's not how I operate. So I did miss out on some jobs and it was fine. It wasn't like it happened a lot. It happened maybe three or four times. Um, and when I do a job, if I take on a contract, that's guaranteed most of the time, that's guaranteed fund, funding, guaranteed income. But if I, and if I work a traditional job is guaranteed income, but it's at the behest of the corporation or the owners of the business. If I took on a position with my own company, it is me determining the hours, the funds, the how much I'm going to charge, and all of those things. And that kind of freedom I like as an entrepreneur. Um, and my schedule got compromised. So now, just for you guys to know, I'm going to be doing some videos I may have mentioned before on how I'm doing my uh, my calendar, my planner, and by me having irregular income, it's very tricky to budget, but I'm going to do my best. And I have to kind of uh, master this technique because um, when I'm on the road, I really need to be very strategic about what it is I am um, you know, expending, uh, uh, money on or how I'm, uh, getting more funds into my, um, uh, household. If I do, uh, do a vehicle, when I do a vehicle lifestyle, 
one of the things that'll be crossed off my budget would be uh, rent. I don't pay a ton of rent right now. I mean, it's a decent amount. I mean, I for me, it's cheap um, what I pay. and But it's still, you know, hundreds of dollars that I would put back into my own household. And all the other items that's on my budget, though, are things that still adds up to thousands of dollars per month. So I have to deal with that. That's something that I'm dealing with. And when I took on this position, it was really for me to kind of get a steady footing on my income to build up my real estate business, you know, just have something like that, just consistent. But um, I don't know, it was commissioned. So I had to, you know, produce and sometimes that's up and down. Um, so anyway, it's bittersweet because I appreciate, you know, the gift that God God gives us. We always have to either learn a lesson or not. And I always learn wherever I am. So I appreciate it position, but I most mostly appreciate it meeting new people, my coworkers. And the site that I was at meeting the individuals that worked there, I really enjoyed um, having that kind of connection. So that's the bitter part of it. And again, the sweet part is that, um, you know, I'm just happy not to be committed having to come to a place, uh, even with my own company. If I if I take on a project, I, I schedule the time to do it at a certain point time but it's based on myself as opposed to the company so that's what's happening I have a couple more videos that I really need to get to you guys and it was being hampered a little bit those are my excuses um with me having to come and work and um I was at you know first when I first started I was about three days a week and then it switched off and then I committed to four days a week and that really was taking a lot out of me and um now I, I, you know, the last few weeks I was two days a week and, and that would have been fine. But, um, I have found myself having more and more activities to do with my own consulting business, which by the way, people may be asking what that is. I, uh, help people start nonprofits. I work with startup, uh, businesses, entrepreneurs. I'm a public speaker. I do workshop facilitation based on a subject matter that's important to small business owners and nonprofits. Uh, particularly on the nonprofit side is organizational development, grant writing, and actually helping people uh, get their nonprofit uh, 501c3 established. So that's what I do and I've been going back and forth, lacking in doing that work. And then some of you have seen my previous videos where I'm a steward of a co-work space. One of my business partners bought, and I'm sort of the manager of that space, uh, doing all of the programming, outreach, and all of the stuff related to that. So, And I just renegotiated something with them. So I will be doing some committed work um, for some months. We're going to see what happens. My goal is always to you know, increase the uh, wealth of my community, myself, my business partners, and any clients that I have. So just want to uh, put that out there that I did just have a transition in my life uh, with this, uh, leaving this uh, company I'm with. And we'll see. I know maybe the guy still keeps me on the schedule just in case I decide to come back. I don't know, but I'm hoping that I'm not a person that looks back at things, you know, and go backwards. I'm always a forward moving individual. So with all of that being said, thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate you for always supporting me in this journey, taking my hand, walking alongside me, learning and growing with me. And subscribing and commenting. I'd appreciate that. If you share it, that would be even better. And we will see you on the other side. I'm grateful. This is Jacqueline J.W. Madmeadow.